Um, there is nothing inevitable that PDCA will lead on to another cycle of PDCA and, no. and so on. And in my experience, I, I have seen, well, I keep seeing continuous improvement initiatives run out of steam actually quite quickly mm. because they lack some of the things we talked about yesterday. They actually lack a clear sense of purpose and they also lack the regular feedback mechanisms that make sure that we are actually making progress, choosing the next thing to do, and so on and so on. I don't know whether this is controversial or not, and no disrespect to Denny and Stuart, but I think it's important to separate the framing of the experiment from the execution of the experiment. And if you manage the execution in such a way that actually helps you see what your progress is on your portfolio of experiments, um, rather than just worrying about you know, focusing on one piece of paper, you do actually get a sense that there is more than one thing to do, that things will flow through the system and so on. Um, so that's what you're going to, uh, you know, a, a possible way of um, organising that is something we're going to um, experience with um, ChangeBan. Um, there's a slide from the end of ChangeBan uh, that we probably won't get to when we do the, uh, the game, uh, but it looks like this. Uh, we believe something, we're looking retrospectively at an experiment that failed. And imagine us asking, we believe something, we believe the hypothesis, and found while doing, in one of the stages of the, the game, one of the stages of agreeing the urgency of the change, negotiating the change, validating the option, the adoption, or verifying performance, during one of those activities, we discovered something, an insight. And as a result of that insight, we decided to reject that change. We we're going to come up with a better idea. Um, and then follow on from that, had we tried something else, we might have discovered this, we might have learned this sooner or more cheaply and more, sa more safely. So what we've got here is something that uh, some of you will know as double loop learning. So a, we've discovered a fact, that's the insight we capture from doing the experiment. We know something more about the world than we did before. Um, but also, we're encouraging ourselves to think about how we got to that learning. And is there a lesson there? Could we, could we get to this kind of learning quicker the next time? Um, so the question is, now when does this happen? So do you have the regular opportunities in the way that you structure your organisation, the way you structure your meetings, review meetings and so on, um, that causes you to reflect on what you learned from your failed experiments and reflect on how you arrived at that learning. We'll play the game now. Right, so the first thing to um, point, out, point out about change band, anything you see from me with this yellow background in the header, is something that I've open sourced. You can see the Creative Commons uh, logo bottom right. Um, and in the, sli in the slides, actually, uh, the, the slides are hidden. You won't see them when I present them, but there are some slides with um, suggestions on, on how to go about making changes and contributing them back to the community. And by open sourcing, it's been fantastic. Uh, Feature Band is now in half a dozen languages. Um, Change Band already, people think we've had, we may have received some. People have tried different ideas. Um, translate them and, and so on, incorporating them into, into other um, workshop experiences or testament meetups or whatever. Um, so, first, the way Change Bank works, it works very simple. It starts with simple ideas and we lay it on a little bit of extra uh, sophistication in later iterations. And our first iteration is uh, about visual management. So, we're visualizing our work. Uh, sticky notes representing our work, um, and there are two kinds of sticky notes. You've got two colours of sticky. Uh, on the screen they're yellow and green. In general it's yellow and non-yellow. Yellow stickies are the easiest to get hold of, why people have the most of, but you need a contrasting colour as well. So one colour represents product ideas, one colour represents uh, improvement ideas. So improving uh, something about our process, changing something about our organisation, um, changing some policy by which we operate. So some kind of improvement idea. We're also visualising our workflow. And our work goes through a process. And our work starts with uh, agreeing the urgency of our particular idea. 
deciding what, what we want to do next. Uh, negotiating the change, coming up, making sure that uh, all stakeholders agree this is an acceptable solution to the thing we're trying to, we're trying to do. Um, from a technical, te technical feasibility point of view or from a uh, you know, policy point of view or whatever. Next we check whether people will actually use this thing or not. So for a product feature, um, we might test, we might do some user research and see how people respond to this new idea. Um, for a process change, we might just try it, for, we might say we'll try this for a month and see whether it sticks. Um, very high performance, does it get the benefits that we hoped for when we prioritised the idea at the beginning? And at the end, we decide whether we're going to accept this change because it's passed all our tests, or reject it, reject it because we because it failed. Um, and what's she doing? Uh, we are kind of modelling the famous valuable, feasible, usable Venn diagram from the um, product management and the startup world. So is it valuable enough for us to, to do? Given all the other things that we could do, is this the best thing that we should do next? Uh, is it feasible, technically feasible, acceptable to all um, you know, decision makers? Uh, is it usable enough to stick? Usable enough to get the level of engagement that we want or whatever our measure of um, usability is? Did it deliver the benefits that we uh, hoped for? If it's all of those things, if it's valuable, feasible and usable, we're going to accept it. If it's not, we're going to reject it. And the trick is that we uh, place it here according to where it fails. If it failed at agree urgency, it goes under AU. If it failed at negotiation change, it goes under NC. If it failed under validated option, where very high performance there. So we get some, some record of uh, where it went wrong. So we set up teams of three to five people. You're already in teams of three to five people. Stickers in two colours, eight stickers per colour. And because we are managing visually, we want to see what we're dealing with. Don't just peel off a stack of eight stickers. Do spread eight stickers of each colour um, across your agree urgency column. And you've also got a deck of cards. I've already shuffled them. You can shuffle them again if you want to, but I've actually shuffled them kindly for you. Um, so you're probably better off leaving them. So first bit of setup, eight stickies per colour. This is our, our backlog of change work, is it? Yes, your backlog of change work. That's good. You've got your eight, eight uh, stickies per colour. You've got your deck of cards per team. Um, Actually, one piece, last piece of setup. If you can just sit so you're all close to the board, it would be very helpful. And you knock, you knock drinks over in the process and so on. Huddling around the corner is uh, probably the best way to do it. I will say, say while we're on the topic of three to five people, um, I would suspect that the, should the smaller teams actually have an advantage. There's, there's less coordination over here, the smaller the team. So this, this, this team, if they don't do well, they've already blown it somehow. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so uh, you've got your decks of, decks of cards. A question for you. What do you think the cards represent? Let's work. Randomness. Randomness. That's a good answer. Um, I get different. It used to be coins. Um, one problem is that outside the UK, not everyone's used to the idea of tossing coins. And even in the UK, it can get very messy. Um, with cards, everyone's got the idea of drawing cards. Um, with coins, people think it's about value. You know, um, and, and they get kind of misled. It is about um, randomness. And there's a technical term that uh, people in the process improvement community and the lean community talk about, and, and that word is variation. And there are different kinds of variation. There are some that are um, generated by the system itself. There are some that are, um, you know, come from outside. Um, in software development work, which is familiar to many of us in the room, you've all experienced the idea where you take a piece of work that you thought would take a day to complete, and then it took two days, or it took five days, or it took ten days, and so on. Um, and uh, for, no, for, for no fault of no one's fault, the fact is, when you started the piece of work, you didn't have a, you, no one had a clear enough idea of uh, what was involved. Um, no one had a clear idea of what else it would depend on. No one had, had a clear idea 
of uh, how the customer would respond to that piece of work and so on. Um, in knowledge work, in you know, the kind of work that all of us are engaged in, you can never be completely sure how long it's going to take until you've done the work. And the answer isn't even a better specification. Better specification may help, but in the end you actually have to test the idea before you're sure, before you're sure um, how long it will take. So the cards are a source of variation in the game. I think it's very important to have work management systems that actually uh, understand that the variation uh, is there. It's being inhumane to insist that all pieces of work take exactly the time requested, or exactly the time amount of time determined by a project manager or determined by an expert. Um, that doesn't take into account the natural variation in the work. It's also important to have work management systems that help reveal the sources of the, those, that variation so that you can begin to get it under control and improve the process. And in fact, uh, tackling variation is a very important um, improvement technique in its, own, in its own way. So that's what the cards represent. Um, so when you draw a card, in fact, actually each of you draw a card now, just to test it. Um, one thing to practice is just doing your, everything I tell you to do. Just one. One per table. One per person. One per person. I'm going to suggest rather than dealing them out that you grab them. Okay. Now what we're simulating is um, you're going to grab your cards, grab your cards and make it visible to everybody. We're, we're, we're transparent here. We're managing this here. You're going to grab your card. Have a quick conversation, you're not, you don't know what the rules are yet, so you're not going to have this conversation, but you're going to grab your card, tell your colleagues what it is you intend to do, and then you do it. And what not to do is to all take turns, you know, give out the card slowly. Right. One person say what they're going to do and then do it, the next person say what they're going to do and then do it. What we're simulating is you arriving at, arriving at your office, the randomness arrives in the form of the, the emails that you, you, you read when you first get into the office, for, for example. Then you have your stand-up meeting where you have, you know, in a very short amount of time relative to the day as a whole, you share what you're doing and what problems you're having, what help you might want from other people, and then you actually do the work. Um, you don't take turns doing work. You're all working at the same time. You don't take turns reading your emails. So you grab a card, have your quick conversation, make your move. It, it's slightly, slightly chaotic. Um, but if you take turns and are too polite about it, you'll go too slowly and, and you will lose the game. Okay, so it's speed is part of speed is part of the game. We're going to do this against the clock. So um, you can draw either red or black. Uh, it's good news if you draw red. So red, you win. Uh, you've got uh, some choices. You can either advance an item that you own. Uh, this item I own has got my initials on it, MB. So my, my item, I can move from one column to the next column. Or I could unblock an item that's one of mine without moving it. So this item here had, had a letter B on it to signify that it was blocked. And I've crossed that letter B out so it's no longer blocked. That's my move done. Or I could start a new item so it goes from the agree urgency column into the negotiate change column and I put my initials on it. So we don't own it until we're ready. When we decide as late as possible, what piece of work we're going to start and who's going to, uh, who's going to join it. So I've written my initials on here. Less good news if you draw black. If you draw black, your, your work is at risk. One of your items in progress will get blocked. So if you have an item in progress that's not blocked, you're going to block one of them. Is that clear? That's the rule? So, um, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, don't block multiple items. You know, um, with, with never more than one piece of bad news comes in a day in this game, which is, uh, which is good. And also, don't block somebody else's item. That would be rude. Yeah? But what do you do? I've given it, give it away. But what do you do when you get stuck? You cheat yourself up by starting a new piece of work. Um, that's probably not what you should do. But I've seen for years and years and years that's what a lot of people do, do. They get stuck on one thing and rather than trying to resolve the issue, they pick up the next piece of work. Keep yourself busy. 
So cheer yourself up by starting a new piece of work, taking ownership of it. So uh, it's Christian here, Christian with a K, this was, this was a friend of mine in Hungary. Um, he's uh, got stuck, but he's starting a new item to cheer himself up. When you're out of options, now when you're, to be out of options, there, must, there can be no more work in the agree as we'll see column. So we're getting to the end game now. Towards the end of the game, when there's nothing left in the backlog, you may find that there are no, according to the rules, there's nothing you can do. So there is the rule of last resort is if you can't un advance, unblock, or start, start an item for yourself, you can help somebody else by advancing or unblocking theirs. Okay? So if you can do nothing else, you help somebody. Getting quite realistic. <laughs> Even if I draw a black. Even if you draw a black. Yes. It, as long as I can't start more work. Yes. So the black the black doesn't mean that you've suddenly got the measles and can't work. The black means a piece of your piece of your work mm -hmm. suffered something unexpected. Okay? And we never replenish this um, and you never you don't replenish the back that's all yeah, the work can, that you can, that's all the work you've got to do yeah. in this particular game. You can only move and unblock your own stuff, though, can't you? You can only by, by default flag. the rules are that you advance, unblock. Uh, yeah, you start a piece of work for yourself. You advance a piece of your own work. You unblock a piece of your own work. Only if you can't do one of those things for yourself, do you help somebody else instead. But all you think you're correct. No, I don't. So when you get, so when there's no more in the to do column, this can only happen when there's nothing else in the to do column. If you find that you can't move. You help somebody else. So basically, reds and blacks become the same once that's it, they're called them to say. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And for the very first, for the very, very first draw, red and black's also the same. Because we're all going to start. Yes, we'll experience that in a minute, yes. So if I get a black and I can't do anything myself, yeah. do I block someone else? You could, yes. Advance. Yes. So when you get your black, you, you, you might still block something, but if you find that you can't start a new item, then you, instead of starting a new item, you would help somebody else. They have to block someone else. No, you don't block anybody else's. That's all. That one was the reason. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Happy. So that's end game one. End game two is about. Um, oh yes. The sort of, no, it applies to red and black. Um, end game two. Uh, when you finish an item, whenever you finish an item, you choose another another item to reject. Yay! Brackets. You know. Um, when you decide not to finish a piece of work that has a, a bullet dodged, there is no point advancing to the end a piece of work that's not going to deliver the benefit that you wanted, or where you know you're not going to be able to agree a feasible solution or, or whatever, or where you learn that it's not, not usable or um, sticky in the way, that, the way that you hoped. So every time you finish an item, you choose one to reject, and as I said before, um, Perhaps you're going to uh, reject an item that you... We're never going to get to this. There are always going to be more important things than this item. We'll choose one from here, and we'll stick it under the AU column under rejected. Um, perhaps we're having trouble um, agreeing a feasible solution, so we'll move it to NC here. Uh, perhaps it's not sticky enough under the A. Uh, perhaps it's not as valuable as we hoped, so we'll move that to DP. It's not worth the pain of making this change permanent. Um, so, uh, question? Yes. Can you um, pr pr only prove your own cards or everybody else? No, as this is a team, I uh, could have made clearer, it's the team as a whole decide what sticky they want to move, okay. to, to reject. Yeah. Yes, rejecting somebody else's piece of work would be rude, I guess, without that, that conversation. And you might not have anything to reject, but it's a team decision what gets, what gets rejected. And that's something to celebrate. Um, and uh, there's a scoring scheme, so this is going to be a competition, see how many points you can get in the limited time available. So one point for each accepted item, up to a maximum of four points per colour. Now the reason for this maximum is that um, there's a, the information theory suggests that the most learning happen, happens when half your experiments succeed and half your experiments fail. What you're doing, you're pro probing the boundaries of knowledge and some of your probes hit on one side of the boundary, some, some probes hit on the other side, and that gives you a clearer idea of where that, that boundary is. Um, I'm not completely convinced that half your experiments failing is the best thing economically, but in terms of learning, in terms of information generated, 
and that is true. So maximum of four points per colour for there, eight points in total. One point for each colour represented the need to solve column of rejected. So uh, it's, it's easy for actually to do it by example. I give a point for yellow and a point for green, a point for green, a point for green, a point for yellow, a point for yellow, and that is six points in total. Um, and a bonus point for each subcolumn of rejected that contains exactly one of each colour. So there's a bonus point for that column there. And that adds up to 13 out of 20. And that actually by accident turns out to be a par score for this game. I expect you to get sort of 13, 14, 15 points for the first round of the game. Okay. Um, we'll practice the first practice the first round or two together and um, before we uh, before it's open season um, so uh, time to play you've got the rules in front of you on the card if you want to look up to the screen you've got your cards in front of you where everyone can see them mm -hmm. right so if you drew red what are you going to do you've got no items to advance you've got nothing to unblock so you're going to start an item taking ownership of it so if you drew red Stick your initials on a sticky and advance it to negotiate. Well, put it in negotiate change. Who got the initials? And five. So just doing red at the moment. Just doing red at the moment. Just, just, just for illustration purposes. So when you do, do this for real, it's going to be all at once. Now, if you, what, what if you drew black? Uh, do you have items to block? No. Uh, but can you start a new item? Yep. Yes. Yes. So, start a new item. No, we've covered this. Any colour? If you were. If you were yeah, I, yeah, whatever colour. Yeah. So, Mike told us how the scoring is going to work. We're going to try and um, yeah. even up all these columns at the moment. And it doesn't matter too much. And then you. Okay, so. Swing. We move forward into the negotiate change. So that means do some, do some work means to yeah. You're done, you're done. Okay. Do you want, do you want to practice one more like that? Are you ready to go? Then we're ready to go. Practice one more when they're out in the, in the world. Yeah, let's try one more. Oh, a little tip before you carry on. When you, just, when you finish with your cards, um, if you leave them face up, uh, the trick for that, the reason for that is that you'll then replay them in the same order. When we play this a second time, so you can't blame then blame the cards for a different set of performance. Okay, so you'll just this card pile face up. So grab a card each quickly, face up. What are you going to do if you've got red? You've got a choice: advance on your existing ones, or unblock one, or start a new one. Whatever you want to do. So unfortunately, I drew block one. Huh? We just don't block much. So who drew black? I did. You need to block one, yeah. one of yours, and, and start a new one. Oh, I like that. And start a new oh, one. That makes me feel better. Of course you You're do. cheering yourself yes. up. <laughs> don't forget to cheer yourself up. Yay! Yay. Hooray! Put him back to school, do some things. He's going to stop Stop that two rounds, we'll go another, another right, round. stop it there. Stop it there. So I'm going to do this against the clock now. Now, before you start, before you start, so I'm going to give you 15 minutes. See how many um, points you can get in 15 minutes. And after the first team finishes, we put it back. No, Karen has you up. Stop, stop, just stop what you're doing. But leave it as it is. Oh, sorry, okay, shit. Sure. After the first team finishes, I'm going to give you two minutes to finish up. Uh -huh. So there's, there's real benefit to being fast. So see how far you can get in 15 minutes, starting now. Don't forget to cheer yourself up and start a new one. Oh, those of you that drew, I'm going to 
more important yeah, is to start that. another one that I suggest okay. I start the green one. So I'm going to go, yeah. The one you started, you put in the next column. I'm going to take another start one bottom, and then I'm going to finish something. So you just gone to that. Yeah, one is accepted. Can I stop you? Let me stop you. I should stop the clock. Now this isn't a facilitator's mistake, this is a deliberate intervention, we'll this. just for a change. Right, let's uh, have your, um, well, let's have this one. We're already running out of board space, we're already running out of board space here. I'll stick that one at the bottom. So how would we describe that, that board, how would we describe that situation? Round. Round? Yeah. yeah. All starting, no finishing. Mm -hmm. I just I just got here in time before they actually finished one. I mean, you finished one, you have finished a couple. I but even one. your boards look actually quite similar to this. Yeah. All starting, no, no finishing. Um, how else might you describe it? <coughs> it's exhausting, chaotic. Some people might say. If we if our backlog was inexhaustible, how how would it end up looking? Overwhelming. Overwhelming. That's another good word. Yes. Overburdened might be a technical term to use. More work than we've got people on the team. I mean, that's uh, that's ridiculous. Mm. Right. So carry on. No, carry on. Mm. What, what happens when you accept the project? project? You can you have to reject. You can reject. You can reject the block. Can we reject the block one? Can we reject the block one? Little tip. If you if you if you rotate your stick to ninety degrees, it's a bit easier on the rejection. Oh, sorry. 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 People sitting around for long periods of time waiting for other teams to complete, which is uh, a boring. Um, so that's good. Right, so scoring for maximum learning. I've lost my clicker, so the old question. You might find a piece of paper helpful. So, one point for each accepted item up to a maximum of four per colour. Yeah, we've got, we got the bunch on. So we know that that's going to be eight that you finish with. No, 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 not necessarily, because it depends on the colours. It depends on the colours. We have seven points. Four of each. Eight. So you've got seven points. We've got seven. Seven. Eight. 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 Are you sure? Right. Then, 
One point for each colour represented so in each subcolumn of rejected. So remember it was yellow and green, that's two six. points. Green, six. yellow and green, two six. points. Six. Yellow, that's one. So you got six. 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 Two yellows. You got six? Yes. Seven. Uh, seven. Oh, I see. Six. Seven. 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 And a bonus point for every of one of these columns where there's exactly one of each colour. Oh, three bonus points. points. Very good. So what's that in total? Eighteen. Total of eighteen. Very good score. Seventeen. 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 Good score. The rules don't say a bonus point for finishing first. But maybe maybe next time. It's not about the hair. Well, it's not speed, it's lead time. I'm just thinking this is a Creative Commons game, so by the end of the day... We <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone, could, someone could publish a different version with, uh, with a bonus point for finishing first. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is very similar to this picture on the screen, very similar to the situation we saw here. This is from a real, <coughs> real playing of the game. Stick is right off game. the... Um, on the second board. Yeah. Right off the board, right onto the table. So now thinking about what we could do about that, and the technique we're going to, going to use is the technique of the work in progress limit. I'm going to ask you not to draw on the boards because I, I use these, uh, I, I get a few, a few goes out of each board. Yeah. And you could use some of your little stickies uh, to, to give yourself a work, work in progress limit of two for each of the three middle columns. It's already there. It's already there. Oh, it's already there. 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 It's already before we carry on, um, Steve has made an observation that in the, the board design allows for um, was it, we, we could choose different width limits per column. So these are parameters that you can change, experiment with, to find out what works best. Um, as well as the classic width limit per column, another, another option is a width limit for a span of columns. So you're limiting the total amount of work in progress without constraining what's about in each activity. And um, sometimes you can actually have both. So you could say um, uh, up to, you're allowed two per column up to a maximum of five across the whole board, you know, whatever. Or because there are three of you, uh, three three across the board, or something like that. So different teams work out different policies that give us give them the uh, best best behaviour that they want. Um, in this example uh, you can just about make out that they've scored a perfect 20 here, so no, no pressure on the rest of you. Um, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, so you've got their maximum of four bonus points, um, and that tells you straight away that maximum points for the top, the accepted area as well. Okay? So... Do you need more of these? Yeah. Where are the police? Exactly the same setup as before. You can use the same stickies if they're clean, or new stickies, eight of each colour in the agree urgency colour. Could we have the clarification of the end game? When do we enter the end game, and what happens? Are red and black genuinely then the same? Um, um, none of the rules stop applying, but if you find that you can't move, then you can take advantage of the end game rules. If you can't start an item after, after doing a black, then you help somebody or else. Yourself. Or block yourself. yourself. Yes, or exactly. block yourself. Or block yourself. Uh, no, you can't. It doesn't say block on that. If you, if you, um, it's, no, it's never a disaster if you can't block yourself. And even if you can't block yourself, you still start a new item. No, but if you can block yourself, you still block yourself. Yes, you do. Yes. And when is the end game when there's nothing else in the agree urgency code? That's, when it's, that's, yeah, that's when your, um, your options start to get reduced. And when you run out of options, then you can invoke one of the end game so, Sorry, just to be completely clear then, if, you can't, if you've got no cards, yes. you play affected by the end game rules. Yes. And if you are at the end game, no, the end game We had that situation, Tanner had no cards, and that was great. It yeah. didn't matter, what, whatever, he, whatever he drew, 
Yeah, he could help somebody else. It was great. Yeah. He was a he was a free free agent to help anyone. No, 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 it's no work. I but if you can't move the ticket because if just you can't move the ticket because of whip rule, yes. What can, does that? Well, we're going we're going to simulate that now. Uh, I wish I. Where did I put my uh, my clicker? You want to go to clicker? All right, it's in my pocket. Right. So exactly the same rules as before, except now we're going to re respect the width limits. So that's going to have some impact. So work gets accepted exactly as it did before. There is no width limit on complete. There's never a discouragement to complete things. That would be quite stupid. Um, you can't push work into a column that's already at capacity. So we can't, Simon here can't move from validated option to verified performance because we've already got uh, two there. Um, but you can pull work into a column, I'm going to stand on this side now, you can pull work into a column that's got, got capacity. Yeah. So you could say the space there is a signal that we can move, we can move something in. Yeah, don't 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 um, so now what? <coughs> you're, this, 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 this is a situation that you're going to see right at the beginning now, as, as, as Stephen um, predicted. What happens here? Um, Wanting to start something, but we've already got two items to negotiate change. You can't. You can't. So go back to um, end game rules. You go back to the end game rules. You help somebody. Yeah. And you will find, because there's more than two of you mm -hmm. on each table, that actually you're going to bump up against this rule right at the very beginning. So instead of starting a piece of work for yourself at the beginning, some of you are instead going to help somebody else. Yeah. But in that case, then you block somebody else. No, you never. No, you never block. That's I know, but yeah. so, so if you go to black, you just don't do anything. If you got black, well, you, no. If you got black, you you always have to cheer yourself up for up for all. But no, you can't cheer. There's two in there. If you have two in there and you draw black, yeah, you've got nothing to block, so that's yeah. cool. Uh, you cheer yourself up and you get black, but you can't start something, yeah. so you help somebody instead. Yeah. <laughs> um, can can the can the work item can the sticky move more than one step? Yes, it can. I don't know where that question is coming from. If you play feature band, the rules discourage cars moving more than one column per, per round, uh, per day. Um, and the reason for that is technical, and it's annoying, and it, and it makes the game more complicated than it needs to be. Um, the language has changed in change band, so it is just, if you can't do anything else, help somebody. And there's nothing to stop multiple, multiple people helping the same and we did see that the team at the back uh, saw cars move two or three cars in, in one go. Okay? So any questions before we move on? Any more, any more questions before we play, in fact? Right, so, 15 minutes again. Hey, hey, hey! Stop, stop it, you guys. Stop. Yeah, no, no jumping no no, jump no. the gun. You will need to be quite careful. Yeah, we were going to be well now. You will need to be quite <laughs> careful about the other rounds. Are we shuffling the cards or not shuffling the cards? No need to shuffle the cards. Now, by, by not shuffling the cards, you can't blame any change in performance on the cards. So you go with the cards as they were before. Okay? Good? 15 minutes starting now. Okay, so I'm going to help.
Right, brilliant. Stop it there. Right, we'll stop it there. So, so scores. Scores. I think it's perfect twenty. Perfect twenty. Perfect twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. How many did you get? It's not far off, is it? Yeah, it's not far off. Um, okay. Good. Interesting conversation in the back about scores driving possibly dysfunctional behaviours. Well, um, not possible. Yeah, <laughs> there is, uh, yeah, there's definitely a dark side to metrics, for example. You know, as soon as you start um, mm. uh, incentivising a proxy for the real result that you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we were sitting here going, don't finish that one, don't finish that one. And now you're choosing to reject things, you've nearly completed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading a book at the moment that's, you know, the book is basically about the dysfunctions of, of Which metrics. I, I can't remember, I'll put it in the notes for the for the workshop. Are you reading a book in the county moment? Um, you, must have had a good, you must have had a good heart's law as well. You know, basically any metric used to, to um, uh, measure the implementation of policy, public policy, I think it's, it's, it's the operations of it, um, will be gained into a little bit more very quickly. So you mean like waiting times in hospitals? Waiting times in hospitals is a very good example. Yes. Or, or around mics. Um, around mics. Oh, yeah, did, we, did we have the same amount of time to do it? Round one, round two? You did exactly the same amount of time, yes. Okay. Oh, did you work quicker than that? Uh, well, you, you work quicker, yes. Um, Yes, you were, slightly, you were slightly quicker, and you also got, got better scores. Well, I just have to think about that. So what, what just happened? <laughs> um, we were more organised. More organised? Yeah. Well, there's well, less work in progress, so less work to talk about. Yes. Less, less work to talk more about. More yeah. yes. yeah. uh, Less work to what else? What? How many, how many <laughs> of you threw, uh, drew a black and then found that you had nothing to block? Yeah. 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 In fact, yeah, there was no, there was no bad news at all. In fact, once you're out of, once you're out of stickies on the board, it's actually great news. You can work on anything that you like. Mm. Um, what else is different about this the second round compared with the first? So, what what we said, so, so I think Dragon's point was that was less to think about actually on the board because yes. of just yeah, you didn't get easy to see what was going on. Yeah. Yes, yes. More, more obvious more choices more you have. Yeah. More collaboration. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I make a point of not using the word collaboration until someone else mentions it or a word like it. But a lot of it was we increased our experience of knowledge. Because based on the first game, we improved what we did. Some of your improvement is based just on the fact that you're doing it for a second time. Yeah. But actually, without the working progress limits, it's actually quite hard to be sure of getting a, a twenty. You remember um, last time round, um, at least two teams had a situation where all their work was in progress before they finished one. Yes, and that meant you couldn't reject one from the agree urgency problem. Yes. Oh. It's almost a sign of failure on which you've rejected. So I, I, I watched one of the lessons of the game. I want you to start thinking about rejecting an item as a win. You know, why waste effort on something that's not going to be as valuable oh. as and there's other things you could do. That wasn't, that wasn't based on value, that was based on method. Yeah. Well, this is where we get to, you know, we are incentivizing you to, to reject things rather than rather than you reject it on, on some objective fact. In real yeah. life, you wouldn't be given, um, a presumably, bonus <laughs> marks for rejecting items, but you yeah, hopefully, the, uh, the you hope you work in organizations that, that would. Um, celebrate a decision to cancel a project. Yes. Most people do celebrate cancelling a project, but whether they're allowed officially to celebrate that is a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> that could mean it just goes back into the original... It could do. Yeah. Although one, one, one of my government projects, I, when I got my leaving card, it was addressed to Mike, never move a card backwards, Burroughs. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I, when I review a board, they could see me cringe whenever someone was about to yeah. take it backwards. Um, that's that's probably a story for another, for another day. Um, but you, usually, it's better to show something that's blocked in place and then actually a more accurate representation of the state of the work than moving a piece of work backwards. 
um, show where this is having an impact, if the problem is having an impact, rather than moving it backwards, and you're, you're kind of sweeping a problem under the table. Um, mm -hmm. so so you do that. question then. Yeah. So in, in real life, we'd actually just move that sticker below the box. So you'd also have a parking lot below each one of those. There are some very sophisticated systems. That's one described in Chapter 5 of the Agenda Shift book, yeah. uh, the holding pattern. Um, where um, blocks work items stay on the board for a certain amount of time, and while they're on the board in a block state, they are still contributing to the work in progress and so on. But after something's been blocked for a certain number of days, and that number of days is a team policy, it moves to the holding area. And while it's in the holding area, it's still the focus of, you know, people are still trying to unblock it, but it's not stopping progress of other items on the board. And then, when capacity becomes available, it's the first. It, when once it's unblocked, it's the first item back in on the back. Don't you should call it the Heathrow effect. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that's why it's yeah, holding. Yeah. Hold it, hold it, get yes. bigger than yes. hell before yes. you find the landing. That's quite. That's quite a sophisticated pattern. Yes. Um, yeah. Lots of different board designs, and you, you, you know, the great thing about um, board design is it's uh, you know as long as you have <coughs> sort of, like, painted it on, or as uh, Tom said, you know, perhaps use tape that's hard to remove. If you write it in the white, white, whiteboard pen and you're happy to change the names of things, you're happy to move columns around, you're happy to change limits, you can constantly evolve your board. And as you're evolving your board, you're also evolving your process. It's a very, very easy and powerful way to um, make process improvement. Um, so a lot more collaboration, a lot more discussion in your standard meetings that had a material impact on how the game progressed. In the first round, it made very little difference, actually. A lot of your conversations, you were just telling each other what you were doing. Mm. I had no material impact on the uh, on progress. Mm. Um, when you've got work in progress limits, and especially when there's less work in progress than there are people, um, you know, you're guaranteeing that there's collaboration happening all the time. Mm. Yeah. And in fact, most teams I've worked with over extended periods in, in the last few years have always got to a point where they had less in progress than there were people, and there was always some collaboration happening. Um, next question, what is a winning strategy? You get the most points. Get the most points, but how, how do you get the most points? By having a healthy mix of the work. Healthy mix of the work in progress, that's a good one. And what else? What? No. Collaborating. Collaborating, yes. Willingness, willingness to reject. Willingness to reject, but yes. But rejecting it. Equally over, yes. Well, that's a sort of slightly artificial incentive. That's the, that's the artificial incentive of yeah. the game. Uh, what else? Rejecting every would be good. Yeah. Um. Did you prefer to start things or finish things? I'm going to put some words in your mouth now. But which, which did you prefer to do? Well, finish. Finish. Yeah. finish. Well, that was, that was kind of one of the weird things we actually commented on when we were playing. Yes. So that was a point when we wanted to stop finishing things for a while. Yes. We needed to stop people. <laughs> well, that was the, it's again, that's yeah. the artificial <laughs> essence of the scoring system. Yeah. Um, but what you tend to find is that you focus first on the columns oh. over here yeah. because uh, and <coughs> finish enough, that creates some capacity here that allows something yeah. else to move. Yeah. 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 When that moves, that creates capacity here that's something there. Yeah. And so on, you get this ripple effect. So what you get, you get work items moving in that direction, and you get the signal that there is capacity moving in the opposite direction. So what we're, this is, uh, so what we've created is what's called a pull system. The system knows how much work it can accommodate, and instead of you starting over here and pushing work into an already overburdened system, which what it felt like in the first iteration, we're now pulling work into a system that knows it has capacity. Okay, that's a pull system. It's a, kan a Kanban system is a pull system that's done through uh, visual means you know, with cars, whether it's cars moving across the board or cars moving moving a lot around the factory. Um, Kanban systems originally were cars that moved upstream saying, I need some of this. Like when you get to the bottom of a box of sweets and there's a card saying, don't forget to order some more. Well, that's a Kanban system. Um, and that's how, kind of how the factory system works. Um, cars moving upstream and the material moving downstream. Our, our kind of Kanban system, the office version of Kanban, is the, uh, the items move across the board to reflect the state of work that they, the, the stickers represent. Yeah, yeah. 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 what's an interesting point on this is that 
if you take Wicks, who went and had a serious problem back in the late 90s where they devastated their revenue, we went back to the suppliers and said, take your stuff back to the warehouse to give us the money back because we need the cash, or leave it here, but from now on you manage your own stock levels. Yeah. So if you ever stock out of a shop, and it might be a pack of screws, there's a fine of 5,000. The suppliers now loved it because they were now responsible for the replenishment of the stock in the warehouses and the shops on their own products, which meant they could actually manage their production scheduling a lot better. Yeah. And it reduced the cost dramatically, which was shared with yes. the customer. We focused mostly on overburden, which means too much work in the system that it can accommodate. You know, when you've got too much work in progress, it's stressful for the people, you tend to get more defects, work lies in the system for longer. Um, but running out of work is, is bad as well, that has human effects as well as um, you know, performance effects. I um, just want to say one of the manifestations of our call is the way we review the board. So you said the winning strategy question was about you, know, you, you focus on getting stuff finished, and we, re we review Kanban boards in that way. I'm standing to the right of the board, this is where I feel particularly comfortable. <laughs> um, I always stand to the right hand side of the Kanban board. So first of all, the stuff that we said was finished, is it staying finished? It doesn't always. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like that gopher game. You know, the gophers pop up and you knock them back down again. But you know how it is. And um, you might deliberately keep um, work it finished for a while until you've had that review meeting to capture the learnings from that piece of work. What 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 are our customers saying about it, and so on. Um, and then you work backwards. So this stuff that's here. What do we need to do to get it over the line? Uh, this stuff, you know, that's still you know more more under development. You know, what problems do we have with it? What blockers do we have? Any problems do we do we anticipate? Do we know who's doing what, um, and so on backwards? And if we know that everyone's going to be busy, we don't have to worry about the stuff that's in the backlog. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll come to that. Mm -hmm. um, versus, you know, starting with the stuff in the backlog. Why haven't we started this yet? Why haven't we started this yet? Why haven't we started this yet? Mm -hmm. If I go back into climb into my time machine, back to m myself of fifteen or twenty years ago, I remember being one of those bad managers that asked. Why, is, why hasn't it started yet? Mm -hmm. um, that's actually a really unhelpful behaviour for managers. It's much better to, to, to ask. Um, <coughs> yeah. Let's start with the stuff that's finished and yeah. the stuff that's about to finish. I had reports that started with the backlog and finished with the stuff mm -hmm. that's complete. You know, if I had my time machine, I'd turn on my reports upside down so that it would start with the uh, start and finish stuff. Um, so that's a little bit of um, uh, Kanban. Uh, um, Background, uh, Kanban being a, a lean tool that has been brought in, a lean production tool from the factory floor that has been reimagined in a way that makes it useful in a knowledge knowledge work setting like product development or other things. Um, good. There's some other things at the end of the game we could do. Uh, we could talk a bit more about rejection. This is repeating stuff I've covered already, really. Um, Earlier, earlier today, we covered this slide, and um, you can think about your rejected um, stickies now, and think about um, kind of reverse engineer. What was the hypothesis that we were testing with this piece of work? So we thought something, but found out while going through this process that actually there's a, a true fact that undermines the thinking behind this idea, and we rejected it, and rejected it as a win. Um, had we tried some alternative approach? Some alternative solution, some smaller experiment, we would have found this um, sooner, more cheaply, and or more safely. Two levels of learning here, reflecting on what we learned, the facts that we discovered about the outside world or about ourselves, um, and we're reflecting on the process by which we achieve that learning. Um, two levels of learning, double loop learning um, is the, uh, sort of the concept you can, uh, you can look up. Um, and a question for your organisation design is do you have the opportunities to ask those questions about the work that's finished? And if you don't, so think about what would be an appropriate forum in which to, to have those. Um, we've done the remaining parts of this in other exercises today, so we won't do this now for the video. Um, that's done, that's the game. It's now coffee time. Thank you.